Hey y'all, I'm Shayna and I'm back with another review. This is for Ready to Love's Make a Move, Season 1, Episode 8, All Work, No Play. And this episode was all right, but next week seems like it's really going to be good. So I'm ready for next week already. <laughs> Let's go ahead and get into it before we do. And before I forget, if you enjoyed this type of content, please check out my other videos and don't hesitate to subscribe. I'm trying to get to 4,000 subscribers by the end of the year. So definitely need your help to do so. Thank you. It's so much appreciated. All right, let's get into it. So we pick up where we left off last week, and that's with Ashley questioning Don about his previous marriage. Um, apparently, he had a courthouse wedding at the age of 21. Sounds like they just ran off and eloped, honey. Nobody was there. No, no witnesses that they knew. Nothing. Strangers was there to sign off on them papers. That's it. He, they kept it a secret for a year until they got divorced a year later. Um, Ashley let it go. I'm glad she didn't like harp on it in this moment anyway, because she brings it up later. But I do need to know why he kept it a secret. Even at the age of 21, if you're able to make an impulsive decision to run off and do this, why was it kept a secret? Why did his wife agree to keep it a secret? Like, I want to know why he kept it a secret back then. And I want to know why he was really like, you know, he didn't lie, but he wasn't anxious to tell her either. <laughs> so what's that about? Like, so he got a little secret and secretiveness about him. Um, so as she pulls out her next card, because remember, they're playing card games with some questions. And it says, what's your honest opinion about me? And he like, that's what the card said. And I feel like he said that because he didn't want to answer the question. <laughs> so he gave a bunch of fluff for me. But he mentioned that she is healed. And I said, sir, what? Say what now? And now, because I, I always felt like Donald was there for the cameras. I don't know what his intentions are, but I don't know if it's genuine. And saying that Ashley out of everyone is healed just confirms it for me. What are you saying? So she begins to start praising him and pouring into him way more than he was her. He gave the narrative stuff. You're awesome. You're nice and friendly. You're funny. And she's like, I love the way you make me feel like I'm the only woman in the room, how you're able to captivate. Girl, please stop. He didn't have no card asking that question. So enough. You've complimented him enough. <laughs> so we see Sharice talking to Tamika over the phone. And since she doesn't have any options, Tamika has new blind dates for her. Meanwhile, everybody else is also going to go to their keeper's home. So we have Zadia, who says today is her first time visiting Cameron's home. The producer said, are you sure about that? <laughs> Ooh, catch it. <laughs> Cam's house looks like a, it's a bachelor pad. Um, it, 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 <laughs> it could use some, some feminine touches and maybe some renovations as well. But it's okay. He said he's not trying to stay there long. So, okay. Okay. At least he got his own place. He ain't living with his baby mama or his mom. <laughs> okay. So Cameron talks about his business ventures, his future goals. He's all about business. Like his mind is focused. He has tunnel vision. He's focused on getting to the bag, getting that money right now. It don't seem like relationships is really on his radar. So I don't know why he's on a dating show. I mean, did you understand the premise of the show? Did you? Okay. So, and I did hear someone mention that I didn't watch Mazel's Crystal XO interview um, because I just didn't understand why he even got an interview, but that's neither here nor there. And I heard that there was mention that he thought he was going on regular Ready to Love. Either it was him or Keith. It was somebody. So one of the guys, I think it was, it might've been Keith who was one of Sharice's options. He thought he was going to go on a regular Ready to Love. He didn't know he was going on this. And so maybe that's what Cameron thought as well. But even still, you're on a dating show. No matter what you thought this was, you knew it was a dating show and you signed up. I don't know how I feel about that. But he makes it very clear, once again, that he is not moving to D.C. And so I just like, you can't say that till you visit. And he's like, I visited enough. I'm not moving, period. So either you're going to move here or that's it. Now, Zadia asked about a long-distance relationship. And, you know, they were like, oh, maybe for the right person. I'm going to tell you this. I was in a long-distance relationship. It Somebody has to eventually make 
a move, okay? No pun intended. Somebody has to make that move. It's not going to work if somebody doesn't make the move. And if he's saying right now he does not want to make a move and he ends up moving, he will resent you for it. And I know firsthand, okay? <laughs> so Zadia asked if he thinks she's the right person. He did not give a clear answer. And I did not like that. Even though it's early, it's new, it's fresh, whatever. I don't really think it takes a man long to know. So yeah, that's just my opinion. Y'all let me know y'all's in the comments. Sharice has a blind date with a guy she noticed from day one. His name is Nick. I know we get to the end because we don't know how old Nick is. We don't know where he works. We don't know if he works. We don't know if he has children, if he's been married before. We literally only know that his name is Nick. So they have a bunch of surface level conversation. Um, they're flirting heavily. Sharice is flirting with him more so. A lot of sexual innuendos. I can't help but feel like Sharice is flirting like this because she's out of options. Either way, Sharice is so boring. She was boring on her season of Ready to Love. She's always been. I don't know why out of all the women, she got picked. I don't know. I don't know. Anywho, <laughs> Renisha visits Tabari's home. It looks nice. Um, then he showed her he was going from the room. He actually showed her all around, not just the living room. Okay. And he was like, yeah, this is the second bedroom. He was like, you know, in case you want to move. If she was moving there for you and y'all together, why would she be in the second bedroom? I don't understand. <laughs> okay, anyway. So he got her roses. He remembered she likes long stemmed roses. Well, okay, that's good. Paying attention. I don't see it for them, though. So Tabari apparently has a child in Mississippi, and Vern has concerns about him having time for their relationship because he's constantly back and forth. She's open to New Orleans, but Mississippi was not on the radar, honey. And I don't feel like she should bend the fold. If you didn't want to go there, girl, don't. Um, at this point, ain't nobody moving. I personally, I just don't see any chemistry between her and Tabari. For all this, she could have kept Jabari. <laughs> really, seriously and truly. Everyone should pick themselves. So in the next scene, Cameron randomly pops up to the ladies' home to speak to Zadia. He's at their Airbnb. And Cameron is explaining to her that they're moving fast. He's got a lot going on. He wasn't expecting for this to actually turn into anything. Child, he was just there to be on TV. Um, and, you know, he just he don't got the work-life balance right now. It's work. Heavily on work. Now, he's giving her the option to move on if she wants because his time will be limited. He, he's letting her know. So there's no way a long-distance relationship can work without time. You have to have a, almost more time than, like, a time with somebody who lives in the same city, in the same state. Um, especially if they're so far away that you had to get on a flight because you had to plan these, these trips. You had to see each other often. You had to talk on the phone and on FaceTime a lot to compensate for not physically being around each other. And it's a lot of work. It's not easy. It's fun and everything at first and then get old fast. Okay. <laughs> so she asks him if he wants to part ways. And of course he says he doesn't. I don't know. Later on, I was like, does he? Is he looking for an out? Maybe. <laughs> Um, she's very understanding of his work situation because she said she was once in that situation. I don't know. It seems like he's a lot busier than she is at the moment. <laughs> but I digress. So the ladies meet with Tamika Lee. This is before the Keepers mixer that they always have. Cherie says she likes Nick. I don't know what she really likes about him besides his potential abs he has underneath his shirt. But anyway, it's time for the, the Keepers mixer. Both Charisse, both of Sharice's recent dates are invited. That's Will with the locks and Nick. Will comes bearing gifts. Okay. He's stepping up and stepping accordingly, I see. Okay. He's trying to get chose. It seems like it's a little competition going on with him and Nick me because they like, wait a minute. I didn't know we both was here for Sharice. Hold up. <laughs> so Donald comes and he spins actually around like he likes to do. And she had on a short dress, so she was like, wait a minute, hold on. <laughs> um, everybody was like, ooh, we heard Ashley rap, but we didn't hear you recite a poem yet. He said, ABC, one, two, three, honey, don't play with me. Whatever, he could have kept that. <laughs> so Vern, she keeps Sabari. And again, I don't see this going anywhere past the show. Like, 
I don't even, she doesn't, he likes to joke and have and laugh and she's like, he plays too much and there's nothing else between them. I don't see it at all. Ashley voices her concerns with Don about him being married a hundred years ago. She keeps um, mentioning it, but he's like, look, I don't, that's in the past. It don't concern you and it don't. And he's like, I want, I, I want to get married again. And I see that with you in the future. And I'm like, last week he said he wanted a friendship that might turn into a relationship. Now he can see himself marrying her in the future. How did we get here? Okay, okay, whatever you got to say to stay, play. I ain't mad at it. So she keeps him and they give each other a little peck. Ashley says she don't kiss everyone, but honey, you done pecked two men. Two men who didn't deserve not in their peck, but okay. Sharice is torn in between her two options. I definitely don't see her with Will. Will, he kind of gives me like Wale vibes. That's who he reminds me of. I don't see her wanting to have deep intellectual conversation often. I don't see it. <clears throat> so she asked Zadia and Vern for help. I thought Tamika was in the house. Where's she at? She can't decide between the two. The ladies are not helpful at all. Zadia is leaning towards Will. Vern is leaning towards Nick because she like chemistry is better than just conversation. At this point, bring Maurice back. Let them sit there and just look at each other quietly. Okay. Where's mute Maurice? So... <laughs> Sharice decides to pick Nick. I'm not surprised. Will, when he exited, he only had kind words for Sharice, and he seems like a very upstanding gentleman. So I'm sure he will not be single in these streets for long, okay? Zadia keeps Cam. I think it's almost unfair that we have to watch them even go through this. Like, unless she's about to say she doesn't want to keep him, we really can skip past her because we know she's going to keep him. So I mean, what's the point? Tamika informs the ladies after all this that they will be dating guys that they may have overlooked in the past. So, in the next scene, we have Vernisha going on a date. And it was who we thought it was last week with that little preview. It's with Mizell. Got a hair monkeys. Vernisha was shocked, first of all, because she's like, why is he here? It's funny that she put Mizell with Vern instead of Sharice. Um, Vernisha didn't like that he downplayed their situation with Sharice when, when they talked about the Lord, the number exchange. Um, she felt like he should have been honest with Sharice, and I felt like he should have been as well. And the fact that he wasn't shows his character and what type of man he is and shows that he's not ready to love. <laughs> um, Vern asked him, does he still have interest in Sharice? And we live, we end off with the cliffhangers to be continued. Now, next week, we see Mew Maurice. Just bring him on back, child. And Kirsten. Now, why is he back? And actually look weak in the knees, honey. But y'all let me know what y'all thought about this week's episode down in the comments. Check out my other content. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.